Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be restoring and using Apple's Pro Desktop from 1999, which is now 20 years ago. I picked up this machine in a large lot of vintage Apple computers about two years ago, and it definitely needs a good cleaning. And I've also never actually turned it on, so let's fire it up and see whether it actually works. Pressing the power button brings the Mac to life. A rather refreshing sight is that it booted into macOS 9.1. The blue and white Power Mac G3s were very easy to open up. All you had to do was lift this lever. With the Mac turning on without any issues, I think it's time we take it apart and give it a good cleaning. First of all, I wiped down the outer casing with some eucalyptus oil. 20 years worth of dust has made its way into this system. To begin the disassembly, I removed all of the PCI cards. The Power Mac G3 has lots of room for expandability. There are many connectors that attach to the sides of the motherboard. First to come off is the 56K modem, which is not integrated into the mainboard. The two Firewire 400 ports have their own daughter board as well. With all the mounting screws removed, the board can now be removed from the case. With the hard disk IDE cable out of the way, I could unscrew the bracket holding in the 6GB IBM drive. We can see that there is a manufacture date of February 1999. To see if we can fix the weird patterns underneath the side panels, I removed the plastic held in place by four hex screws. After some fiddling, I worked out that the plastic was also held in place by these plastic clips. Interestingly, the G4 characters are made from rubber that's adhered to the metal frame. The semi-translucent blue plastic covers both the optical drive and zip drive, which after removing several screws can be taken out together. After struggling to detach the power cables, the dusty drives were free. The fairly standard looking ATX power supply is held in place by several hex screws. However, I couldn't seem to get it out without removing the bracket that holds the system fan in place. Oh boy, that's one dusty fan. Several cables were underneath one of the hard disk brackets. The bracket was held in place by screws on the bottom of the Mac. Any cable that wasn't taped down, I actually removed. The other side panel came off pretty easily, revealing the rubber G3 logo, which is somehow very dirty. The nifty carrying handles that can be seen on many newer Power Macs and Mac Pros had their origins on the G3. The top plastic piece can now be slid off easily. Flipping the rather naked looking G3 over, I removed the plastic feet. The rubber material has nearly detached from the foot. The front bezel was held in place by several plastic clips. I really like how easy this Mac is to disassemble. Underneath the rear bezel we get a good look at some dust. That definitely has to be some of the best airflow I've ever seen. Until now I've never seen what a G3 Power Mac looks like completely stripped back. Taking the dusty Mac outside, I began giving it a vacuum. Using a fairly rigid brush made dislodging the dust far easier. Nearly every surface had a thin layer of dust on it. I didn't realise that the foam covering the speaker grill was quite brittle. Whoops. One of the plastic clips that holds the side door on had actually come off. A small dab of superglue should hold it in place. I'm quite surprised how much debris got behind the plastic side panel. Further cleaning will definitely be required. Aside from the power supply, this is the only fan in the whole system. So it's not too surprising that it needs a good cleaning. Moist air over time has caused the dust that's accumulated on the air vent to start corroding the metal. I also dusted off every other piece of the Mac, including the power supply. Even using some methylated spirits, part of the casing couldn't be easily cleaned due to pitting on the metal surfaces. 
The G3 logos on the side looked so much cleaner after a rub with some metho. I also scrubbed the fan blades with metho to remove the last of the dust. To perhaps reduce the corroding metal on the fan vent, I scrubbed it clean before I went over the surface with a paint pen. I realize this probably won't save the metal in the long term, but for now, it looks a little bit better. The weird patterns on the plastic actually appear to be dust. So after a quick cleaning, they actually look pretty nice. The processor's heatsink was held in place by one metal bracket, making it very easy to remove. The CPU makes contact with the heatsink with a small thermal pad. Here we've got the 350MHz PowerPC 750, a very capable chip back in 1999. The surface was cleaned before I applied some new thermal paste. Listening to some of my viewers, I bought the non-conductive, carbon-based Arctic MX4 paste. The small ball of paste will spread thinly over the die surface once the heatsink is back on. Scrubbing the handles and feet with methylated spirits worked pretty well. However, the gluey residue that held the rubber strips to the feet proved difficult to remove. I recently purchased some sticker removal solution, which I applied a tiny amount to and let it sit for a few minutes. After a lot of scrubbing off camera, I applied some glue and put the rubber strips back in place. The reassembly can now begin. All of the plastic pieces can now be clipped back on. The plastic side panels required a bit of force to put back on. I must say, the outer casing looks so much better after the cleaning. Plugging the drive power cables back in with such a cramped space was quite challenging. With the rebuild complete, I tried turning it back on. I was getting the boot chime, but no video signal. So it was time to open it back up and hopefully figure out a solution. I hadn't yet touched the 256 megabyte of RAM that was installed. Trying to start up with no RAM yielded no boot chime. Reseeding some different PC100 RAM sticks got the system starting up again. With it all back together, let's actually try running some old programs. A game I used to love playing back on the Macs in primary school is Kid Picks. Boy, does this bring me back. I'd definitely hang that masterpiece in a gallery. There is also a very basic animator as well. My six or seven year old mind was blown away by this. On an old 1999 CD program sampler disc, I found a game called Dark Vengeance. The graphics are pretty solid for the time and it runs really fluidly on this Mac. Commander. StarCraft 2 also runs great. Although I really have no idea how to play it. Most of the programs installed on this Mac were either deleted or were on a local network as far as I can tell. I also ended up putting in 384 megabytes of RAM after filming. As a kid, I also loved playing around with all the random sound effects. Another game I found on the sampler disc was this Blue's Clues one. I think I nearly went insane listening to the voiceover. Maybe I should see what's on all these old 100 megabyte zip disks I have one day. To finish up cleaning the case, I applied a small amount of cut and polish to some of the scratches, which was actually extremely effective. That's one very clean Power Mac G3. This has to be one of my favorite Apple computers that I own. Last of all, I cleaned off any remaining gunk with some eucalyptus oil. The Power Mac G3 ended up looking a whole lot cleaner, 
and even after 20 years, the design is still really cool. These blue and white Power Mac G3s are actually starting to be worth quite a bit of money, so if you've got one, I would definitely recommend holding onto it. Once again, it feels very nice to have restored another Apple Mac back to its former glory. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.